And when you think about Great American Ballpark, you think of the smokestacks. And each ballpark in the major leagues has its own defining qualities and images. And of course, the goal of any baseball fan is to attend all 30 ballparks. Well, Mark caught up with a couple of guys who did just that. And not only did they attend all of the stadiums, they did it in 30 days. We're at Comerica Park with the 30 and 30 for 30 guys. Brian O'Connor, Tim Leif, and you guys have been traveling to all 30 Major League ballparks in 30 days, all by car, to celebrate your 30th birthdays. First off, Brian, where did you get this idea? Well, it's an idea that we've been kind of kicking around the last few years. Uh, basically, since we turned 20, we had been kind of wanting to do a road trip, and uh, I'm a teacher. Tim works in finance. So basically, every summer uh, that I have off, I've been needling him, like, hey, we should take a trip. We should take a trip. And then finally last year, he needled right back at me, and he said, fine, you want to do a trip? Let's do them all. 30 days, 30 games for our 30th. Tim, you're in finance. Does that mean you're the reason you're keeping an eye on the budget for this trip? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. We we have uh, had our uh, several different, I don't know, I wouldn't say disagreements, but Excel spreadsheets have been prevalent both with the scheduling of this thing and also the budgetary constraints because, you know, this is something, again, that we're just kind of funding and, and doing ourselves. Speaking of the scheduling, you guys didn't program this into a computer. You actually took out the schedules yourself and mapped it out. Yeah, so basically it was just, uh, it was an entire Sunday that Brian and I spent doing it, and it, one person with an Excel spreadsheet, the other person with uh, the MLB schedule and Google Maps because you know, we had that additional constraint because we're doing a road trip, we're driving the whole thing. We need to make sure it was feasible to drive to all the locations. So yeah, it took us about a day, but uh, at the end of it, you know, it was, it's obviously been totally worth it. And really, once we got it all mapped out, that's what was sort of the, the moment where it was now, oh man, this is tangible. We can go do this, now we should. Brian, road trips and baseball, they're two maybe uniquely American things, two great pastimes. You guys have gotten a little bit of fame for this, over 5,000 Twitter followers already. Has it been surprising the way this has caught on? It has been completely surprising, something we didn't expect at all. When we left uh, Chicago to head to Seattle for our first game, we had, what, 18 Twitter followers? Basically just created an account for our friends and family to keep up with us. And, we, yeah, like you said, we've grown to over 5,000. It's been amazing. All the people on Twitter that we meet, all the fans we meet at the stadiums are super nice. They all want to tell us what their favorite stadium is, what the features of their ballpark is. It's been Incredible. Now here at Comerica, you guys have got an inside view, got a tour. Has that been typical of places? Or has that kind of picked up as you've gone along and more of the stadiums and the teams have found out about you guys? Yeah, it, it, it sort of depended, I think, on their social media group. Uh, again, we that's sort of our groundswell was, was via social media and via the fans, really. Uh, so that's been so cool to interact with all the fans and everything. But yeah, we've, we've, we've seen about half the, the teams do something for us and then about another half that um, I, I just think it's it, so much going on and we're so small potatoes for a lot of these guys. But yeah, so many teams have been very generous to us and have reached out and everything. So that's been great. Brian, 30 games, 30 days. Are you sick of baseball? Are you sick of each other? <laughs> uh, I don't think we're sick of either. It's been, it's been great, man. You get to spend 30 days on the road with your best friends. It's been phenomenal. <laughs> what has been, we'll start with you, Tim, what has been your favorite part of this trip? Ooh, good question. My favorite part of this trip, uh, I would say definitely the fan interaction is up there. And also the fact that since we're doing this all in 30 days, we have almost unparalleled comparability. We have a memory of Seattle that is only 28 days ago, or 29 days ago now, that you know, we can compare this park to Safeco, and we can do so in a very uh, readily apparent way. And I really appreciate the fact that, that we got to get to see all the nuances of all these parks and everything. And uh, also the road trip experience has been a lot of fun for me too. Yeah. Brian, your favorite part? Um, I think what's been really interesting is the uniqueness of all the baseball parks. You know, when you're watching on TV, you kind of have a feel that the parks are different, and everybody talks about how, you know, the dimensions are different in each park. But it's been really amazing to see what each city does to each of its ballparks, whether it's, you know, a dome that's retracted or it's you know a Yaki way or the what the Cardinals have in ballpark village it's just it's so uniquely baseball uh, and it's been amazing to experience you know it seems like almost every year we hear a different story about how baseball is dying from what you guys have seen tra traveling across the entire country is baseball a dying sport well uh, no, I would say no I don't we, think so. honestly when we started this trip we expected to see half empty baseball parks everywhere we went because we've heard that baseball is a television sport nobody goes to the stadiums anymore they're overpriced you know those kinds of things and really for a few exceptions we've seen two-thirds three-quarters full ballparks and then what's really surprised us a day game on a Tuesday something like that where you'd expect not a lot of attendance sellouts in several different locations and people are so and, and, and the people themselves are so into their team. It, it, without a doubt, the fan support that baseball has, I don't think we'll ever let the sport die. 
I know you guys are keeping a blog, keeping everybody up to date. Any thought of maybe turning this into a book idea going forward? Well, it's uh, obviously it's something we had never thought of before we left. Uh, but a lot of people have told us that they really enjoy what we're doing and they would like to see us kind of record it and uh, disseminate it. So yeah, it's something we've been talking about. We're not exactly sure what it's going to be. And but we've, we've shot video at a lot of the locations we've been at, so uh, it may end up being some sort of document documentary type of thing. Again, we mostly did it just for ourselves. We had no idea that this was going to be anything, so uh, we'll kind of wait and see, I guess. So I want to thank Brian and Tim for taking their time to talk with us. They had a crazy final day. When we caught up with them in Detroit, that was supposed to be the 30th game. It was the 30th day, but because of weather the day before, they left Baltimore early that Sunday morning, drove to Detroit, caught the first couple innings in Detroit, and for the first time of that road trip, they left the game early to drive back to Baltimore, got to the Orioles game in time to see the final innings of that game, and then had to drive all the way back to Chicago because Tim had to be back at work that next Monday he morning. He only got 30 days off, and you can understand. I mean, well, that's enough time. Got to get back to work. And, of course, a tremendous story. And what I found most interesting is that they couldn't really tell us what their favorite thing or attraction was at each ballpark because it happened so quickly. You know, in 30 days, they're seeing ballparks every different day, and it's a lot of information to take in. Yeah, they've uh, updated their blog since they've returned and have, have done some rankings. I suggest you, you head over to their website and kind of look it all up. Now, we heard from Urban Meyer earlier, and speaking of road trips, a lot of folks will be starting to think about their Ohio State road trips. College football season right around the corner. We caught up with Kirk Herbstreit earlier this week, and Herbie broke down an unprecedented Ohio State quarterback situation for the defending national champs. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in my life at, at any level where you have three guys. I mean, think about all three of them are Heisman candidates and they're on one team. So Urban and I were just talking about that. It's, it's going to be very, very interesting how he handles that because that can either be a great situation for you or it can be a situation that can potentially become a headache. So he's got a plan. He's so experienced with, with uh, this type of thing. So he'll he'll be ready to go, and I'm sure the players will too. Is the SEC reign of supremacy over in college football? No, I, I, mean, think, I still think they're a great conference, obviously, uh, top to bottom. They're probably still the, the elite. Um, but I think what the Big Ten did last year and what Florida State's done recently, I think some of that is quieted down. I think it had to do with seven straight national championships, their success in big bowl games and other games, uh, non-conference matchups when they play other people from outside of the SEC. And, uh, you know, it's just a fact. It's not an opinion. But I think in the last couple of years we've seen uh, maybe that, that big kind of wall of dominance maybe uh, crumbling just a bit. We know fans are chomping at the bit. How excited are you to get to Labor Day weekend yeah, and get college football back? Man, I can't wait. I mean, I'm, I'm one of these guys, you know, you get to mid-July, I start getting really anxious and excited, uh, thinking about the upcoming season and all the different storylines. Uh, it's going to be, that's a great thing about college football. It's always something new and new storylines. Good to see Herb Streets like a lot of us and can't wait for the season to start. And for those that are counting, it's about 52, 53 days before Ohio State kicks off with Virginia Tech. A lot of interest in Ohio, a lot of interest nationally in this story, given that Ohio State, the defending national champions, and kind of unprecedented. Three starters. Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you think is going to happen week one? Who's going to be uh, under center? Ohio State will have a Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback. I won't say he's under center because uh, it'll be a shotgun. That's right, but that's right. We're almost out of time here on our All-Star Game special. Before we go, though, Matt, reflect back. What are you going to take back from this 2015 All-Star Game? What a week for Cincinnati and what a week for Major League Baseball. Another great showcase, Great American Ballpark hosting its first All-Star Game. Huge success. The Home Run Derby, I think, was the highlight. The All-Star Game itself, of course, fantastic. The AL will host the World Series. But when you think back of the Home Run Derby and Todd Frazier and the night that he gave the fans here in Cincinnati, I think that's going to be my lasting memory. Well, you know, they say no one markets nostalgia quite like baseball does. And when you think back to the 2015 All-Star Game, for me, it's going to be Pete Rose coming out as one of the four legends of the Cincinnati Reds, and then the living legends of Major League Baseball, Hank Aaron, Sandy Koufax, Johnny Bench, alongside Willie Mays, and the ovation that those four legends got that's what I'm going to remember from this 2015 All-Star Game. Yeah, absolutely. A really special moment. The loudest cheers of the night for Pete Rose and, and those four. And just another amazing moment here in Cincinnati, part of the 2015 MLB All-Star Game. That's going to do it for us. Thank you for joining us. I want to thank all of our guests. For Ben Reif and Matt Finkel, I'm Mark Kuntzer on WOSN.